Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome to the Sustaining Keto Podcast. Uh, If you haven't left us a review, please do so. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, please do so. That's good. That's good. (laughs) So I think it's so funny because you didn't even ask me what we were going to talk about. You just don't care? At this point, I'm just like, let's go, dude. (laughs) Well, this is what I was thinking is we just got back from a trip to Florida, a little business trip. It was short. But it was different than the trips that we've taken. And so I thought maybe we could just talk about that, how it went, how it was different from the other, because we have podcasted about, you know, taking trips before and our tips for that. Most of the tips we gave were not super applicable because it was a different setup. But I also want to maybe address today how to not like get derailed by vacations or exception eats or stuff like that. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, I think that's very applicable to what we're going through right now. So we went to Tampa. Yeah. I'm going to back up a little bit. Uh, The last week of April was like kind of crazy. It was a little more stressful. April was a super successful month weight loss wise. But then the last week of April was a little, a little touch and go, a little sketchy. We have a teething two-year-old. We had a dog that was sick. And we were supposed to go out of town, which I always get like pretty bad traveling anxiety for some reason. The overall stress just went up the last week of April. And along with stress comes with urges. Yeah. Just wanting to eat, just wanting to emotionally feel better. So I was really stressed. I, multiple things were going through my mind. I'm like, if this dog is sick and she wasn't sick with anything serious, but like stomach issues, I'm like, can we still board her? If the kid, my sister had this like raging stomach flu going through her house, I was afraid we were going to catch it. We work with her. Anyways, it was mostly, it was all me. It was all in my brain. Ryan was doing better than I was, but that was kind of the lead up to our trip. So then we go on the trip. We flew there obviously, but we were staying in a hotel which I think if you want to have the most control possible for a vacation, like get yourself an Airbnb. But I feel like, did we have different experiences? Uh, towards the end a little bit, I think. You were ready to like get on track. And... Yeah, the travel day on the way home, I was good. Yeah, like when we were traveling down there, we got there and we just like, we don't travel a ton and we just didn't think to like reserve a rental car. So like the (laughs) whole time after we landed, so it's like a four hour flight, way too long for my ADD brain. I never want to have a flight that long again. I just get so antsy. We get there and we're like, okay, let's try to get a rental car. And they're like, you have to book for seven days. We were going to be there for like a day and a half. So it kind of started off in a panic right? Like it was just yeah. like, mm-hmm. then we we tried to get an Uber and then the Uber didn't show up. And then we finally did get an Uber and then we were there and it was just like, could we have made a keto option that night? Absolutely. But it was almost as if my brain didn't actually see that as an option. So again, just showing up and letting you guys know that like, we also have human brains. And what my brain was telling me was like, after that nonsense, what, you going to get an unwitch? Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. And it was like, no, we're going to order some Chinese food and that's what we're going to eat. So that's what we did. And I want to say, like, this is what I teach my members. It's like, I'm always reminding them they have to look for things that they did right. Like, you have to look for ways that you won. And so my brain got a little bit dramatic, feeling like I couldn't be in my routine. Ryan heard about it nonstop. It was just making me anxious. Like, I like my routine. Um, But I was able to identify places I went right. Like, every morning I made a plan. I may not have followed that plan perfectly, but I made a plan. Most days we were keto most of the day. And then in the evening, like we went out to eat with his work. We went to this awesome little place. Well, like day two, we had an unwitch for lunch and then, yes. and then we had that dinner. And that was it. It was just the two days, it. right? Thank yeah. goodness it was so short. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we went to this fun place. It was like, I, I don't know how to even describe the ambiance of it, but. Very rustic. Yeah. Like rustic, all these awesome lights and like amazing. Very fancy. Yeah. And the people that Ryan works with, they just like ordered a shit ton of starters. Like we didn't even <laughs> order it and they just kept showing up. So like we got a chance to try a bunch of stuff. It was really nice to just enjoy that experience without feeling guilty about it. Yeah, no regrets there. Yeah. But like then, if you're going to go to a fancy restaurant and like someone else is paying for it. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> just go ahead and enjoy yourself. Just eat the food. And did I overeat at that? Absolutely. Um, 100%. 100%. They had like this mac and cheese, guys. Anyways, <laughs> so that was the second day. The third day, 
I find that I guess I don't realize how much I'm moving throughout my normal days at home. I mean, I know because I have my aura ring and it tells me about my steps and I can do like a 20 minute walk in the morning and I hit 10,000 steps, no problem. But Ryan has to do like a 45 minute walk and then (laughs) then you still don't hit it. So I haven't realized how, again... I have like a pretty bad ADD brain. I'm I'm realizing the severity of it lately. I'm constantly just picking stuff up and prepping stuff and let's get the lunch and let's prep the th- who needs dinner. And now it's my turn. Like I'm constantly on the go. So it is not super comfortable for me to just be stuck in a hotel room. Or a plane. Or a plane or <laughs> anywhere. I mean, now we're realizing like why I hate bowling and why I hate board games and why I like the movies, the movies, like I hate all of these things. And now it makes sense. It's just because it's just too long of a commitment, which I knew that, but I wasn't always dialed into the reason. So for me, there was a lot of restlessness and boredom and, but also then you're like, should we go somewhere? And it's like hot and we don't so know where we're going. The, and the travel, the, the, the day... I don't know what the difference was. I, I I was I just I just decided the day we wake up, I'm gonna get back on travel day rather than yeah. the day I get home. Yeah. I'm not gonna snack all day like on a plane. Like I'm just saying, I'm gonna watch my shows on a plane and I'm gonna be fine. You know yeah, what I, mean? I did not make the same choice as Ryan. I was um, just I just woke <laughs> up and decided like I'm gonna be willing to feel hungry today. Yeah. And I'm gonna be fine. Like I'm gonna live. Yeah not going to be that big of a deal and it wasn't you did fine i did yeah it was fine towards the end there like when we got off the plane i was like bro i need a diet coke yeah that was like by 9 9 15 at night and he hadn't eaten since the unwitch at like three or two yeah so we made different choices and i if i'm being honest my brain really was just like maggie what are you doing like last month was so successful really struggled i'll I'll be honest yeah i felt like (laughs) i woke up with like great intentions for the day. But I also feel like when I have these experiences, it makes me so much more aware of what my clients go through. That like, I get it when people just keep waking up and being like, what is wrong with me? Like I make my plan or I don't. And then by noon, I'm just like, I I, I don't, you know, and it's, it's just something that you have to troubleshoot. And what I'm also always being really clear with them is like when you're doing new stuff or when your life changes or your circumstances change, you now have a brand new set of thoughts you have to acknowledge. I don't have a ton of thoughts to work on about how to be keto in a hotel. I don't have to deal with that ever. Yeah. The last time we were in a hotel was January of 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just not something I have to manage because I don't have a need for it. So when you do those things, that's kind of how you learn. Even I'm just a reflective person by nature, I think. And we discussed like what the plan is for, like how do we best cater trips for ourselves? What's the best way to plan? Is it um, possible for us to truly plan keto trips if we're going to be in a hotel? Like it just helps us for next time. I'm really big on milking experiences for all they're worth and learning as much as you can. And I learned a lot about myself on this (laughs) very quick 48 hour trip to Tampa. So Didn't stay super keto, but I stayed way more keto than I normally have. Like when we went to Vegas in January 2020, we were eating all the food. Like we went to Jack in the Box like four times and that was a short trip too. Yeah. You wake up and once you're like, I'm not keto, you're like, then anything goes and we should eat as much of the food that we're not allowed to have as possible. That's the thing about keto though. Like I'm not dogging it. I'm just like, and I felt this way when we first started doing keto I stayed keto so long because I was so afraid of kicking myself out. Yeah. Like, why was that? But that happens once the first time, right? Like that specific scenario, because I did the same thing. It was about four months that we were keto before we broke it. Yeah. That's such a long time. And yeah, I was just, just so don't scared know of what undoing. going to be. I was scared of undoing the yeah. work. Yeah. The work that I had put in. Yep. And that's normal. I think that's one of the biggest issues with keto is that you're i posted a little bit about this the other day is like you're constantly measuring is it worth it is it worth it is it worth it to have is it worth it oh i don't know and most of the time the way we weigh that out is like no it's not worth it or then we do it and we're like that wasn't worth it it's constantly going back and forth of like is this even a worth it choice to make so i think that is one of those things to be really careful about um but i also know that it's a learned skill Because I've been able to kind of, even with the last podcast that we've recorded, we've been talking about having weekly exceptions and stuff like that. 
it's possible to manage your mind around that, but no one's really teaching people how to do that. Yeah. Because you have this built-in layer of keto that is ketosis. It's like you're either in or you're out. And what do you make it mean when you're in? What do you make it mean when you're out? We know for me personally, it, I had a kind of a damaging story to what in and out meant. In and the deeper in, the better. Out, oh no, who knows how this is going to go. I can't live my best life now. And I'm I am working now to find a very beautiful balance that allows me to have what I want, but also is about keto 90% of the time, maybe 95%. And it works very well. So for anyone out there that's like, this is something I've been thinking about, which I don't know if it required a whole podcast episode. Maybe it does. But one of the coaching calls I had the other day, I was coaching someone and she really wanted to eat chips. I don't know. We were talking about chips and I said, okay, so she, and she kept saying things like future me eats chips. And like, I was starting to see the disconnect between who she thinks she needs to be now and who she is in the future. And it's like, okay, how often does future you eat chips? And she's like, like every day, which may be true, maybe not true. But she said every day, but I wouldn't overdo it. And we talked a bit about this and I coached her on it. But you, those two people need to be similar people, right? You don't want to lose your weight in a completely different way than you plan to live. Yeah, 100%. And if... Another thing, since we're talking about getting kicked out of ketosis and all of that, if you can't trust yourself with chips while you lose weight, you will not lose your weight and then suddenly know how to manage that. So my recommendation is that you learn how to manage it while you're losing your weight. And the way that I recommend is that you plan it. Would you, if someone is keto and they're, uh, I mean, what's your opinion on that? Like their future self wants to eat chips every day, then maybe they shouldn't be keto. Yeah, I I don't think there's any right answer to that, but I do think that the you who loses weight and the you who maintains their weight and lives their life like just continues on. They don't like those people should not be polar opposite yeah. people. They shouldn't be completely unrecognizable from each other. I have through a lot of years and trial and error been able to like perfectly curate exactly what I want my life to look like. And an an enormous part of that is I want to feel very, very good because I use keto in a therapeutic way. I do use it to manage my mental health as well as my attention issues. And when I am mostly keto, and this has been kind of like playing around with it, what my levels can kind of be. When I'm mostly keto, I get everything that I want. But it was also like a non-negotiable for me that you and I can go on a date night once a week and have a meal that's not keto. And sometimes the meal is keto. Yesterday, I did have a couple fries. I probably had like 10 fries. Um, but I ordered an omelet because my life has balance where it's like I could have gotten a burger. That would have been totally fine. But I know the balance between like this is what my life will include. It will include keto and low carb most of the time because that's how I feel my best. But I'm learning that I can have a little bit more freedom and still feel my best. But if we're scared to try because we're just terrified of chips or we're terrified of eight French fries. Yeah, but it took you so long to get through this mental space of being able to handle that stuff. I don't think everyone's there. No, I don't think everyone's there either. But it's just because I had a refusal to learn because of this opportunity of me living the balanced way I am now was always available to me. But I did not believe that. Mm. So it wasn't a keto or balance problem. It was a thought problem, like all problems. So it came down to me trying to figure out what, what what's the discord here? Why am I still afraid of food? Why have I now demonized keto food versus non-keto food, keto food versus exceptions? It was, it was just a, a new layer of this journey that I was ready to finally go on. But I also think that you don't need to wait four years to do that. You know, you don't, and I don't want people to get confused like, oh, Maggie, she's lost most of her weight. That's why she's yeah. giving herself more balance. That's why she deserved it. She earned it now. No. I just finally was like, what the hell am I doing? Like, I I want this to be a forever thing. And let me also say, this whole four years, I was not not eating exceptions. I was, but I was doing it behind my own back. I was doing it without planning it. So it's not like for four years I was super strict and I never went near keto food. We 
reestablish this unhealthy relationship by not planning, by eating when that wasn't what we wanted to do and way overeating and way overdoing it and binging on food on the weekends because we're so afraid to plan it. So it's not that I put it off. It's that I was doing it in a way that did not serve me. I was doing it in a way where I was way overeating and I was way overdoing it and I was making myself sick. Like when it came down to just feeling terrible when I woke up and being super bloated, I'm finding I have none of those side effects now that I'm actually implementing the tools that I teach around hunger and fullness and moderation and like not overdoing it because you're so afraid of this food that you feel like I could never plan this. I could never have this. This will never be okay. So because I'm giving it to myself now, go hard because we have no idea when the next time we'll get chips is. Yeah. So it creates a problem. So I just want to encourage people to, to play around with that because you're not going to lose all your weight in a way that's completely unsustainable because my guess is you probably won't lose your weight. Chances are you won't hit your goal, but if you do happen to hit it, you're going to get there and you're still going to be afraid of food that doesn't fall into the keto category. And that you don't want, I don't want you to end up there. I don't want that to be where you end up to where you're like, I lost my weight, but now that I'm here, I still can't have anything that I want. You're setting yourself up to go right back up. Well, that happens with a lot of people. Yeah. Well, and I think it's just because you're not taking into account the ability that you have to just plan the food. And yes, I'm telling you guys, some of the sexiness is taken out. Ryan and I were talking about this on our date last night. When you were like, I'm going to eat this burger and fries and I'm not going to eat till I'm stuffed. Like I'm literally going to eat until I've had enough food. And then you realize that like it's not super common for you to actually be able to finish an entire cheeseburger with a bun and a, and a basket of fries, you realize like, oh, this was never like a normal serving size. So we have that working against us too, these enormous portion sizes. And you eat half the burger and you eat 15 fries and you're like, I have totally had enough. Yeah. It's not as like pleasurable. It's not as sexy. It's not as like, ooh, yeah, it's not. But I promise you that what it gives you is the balance and the freedom to be like, this is good. But another thing we discussed yesterday, it does not get better the more you eat. That, that messed me up, dude. I know. It, that, one, that one will sit with you. It, the food does not get... I don't care if it's your favorite food in the whole world. Uh, the best cinnamon roll you've ever had. It does not get better past the sixth bite. Like I'm thinking of the cinnamon rolls we used to eat and it's like I would never eat a full one of those now. I wouldn't because... I used to eat them and just be like, oh my gosh, because you'd top it off with milk and be mm-hmm. like, I feel ill right now. Because you were never supposed to eat that whole thing if you're listening to your body. And me and Ryan, it might be different. I, I'm i literally only speaking for myself. A full glass of milk and a huge cinnamon roll by myself would never be the option I would choose now. But in the past, I would have eaten the whole thing, made myself sick and been like, see, I can't eat off keto. Yeah. That. <laughs> that's why I feel so true. No, it's because you massively overate carbs, sugar, and fat all in one meal and then topped it off with 16 ounces of milk. That was the problem. And we all want to, well, I, I, best, I guess I better go track all my food again. Yeah. It's like, no, I guess you shouldn't eat 1600 calories in a cinnamon roll. <laughs> and it's just so impressive to me what our brain will tell us when it's like we're massively overeating, but we're unwilling to look at that. We'd much rather be like, I guess I've got to... <laughs> Do yeah. 75 hard, you know? It's Dude, like, like, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's like really the last step in figuring everything out for me. Like, it's the hardest skill to develop. The hunger stuff? Yeah. Not overeating oh, yeah. off-plan food. And you know what? You know what I love the most about the fact we we did find a babysitter to just come on Sundays. Like, we have a little babysitter that comes for two to three hours on Sunday so we can go eat food. Just go out to eat. We walked around Sundance yesterday. And what I love most about it aside from the fact that I encourage everybody to like find a way to like take breaks and stuff, but is we are normalizing our ability to go spend time with each other, enjoy a meal and not go to stuff our faces and get so much joy and pleasure from food. Cause don't get me wrong. I do look forward to it as a break and a date and a way to reconnect with you, but it's not all about the food, but yet we get to go to places we want and have food that's not keto. And us doing that every week tells my brain, whatever you want to have, like you can just plan it for next Sunday Mm -hmm. for next date night. And it just normalizes the fact that this isn't 
a super special occasion. This isn't a cheat. This isn't a way to like do the sneaky food eating. This is just a dinner with my husband once a week. So many we people, get to eat whatever. So many people correlate off plan choices to weight gain because they overeat when they do it. And then the scale goes up and it reflects that, or they eat tons of sugar and carbs together and the water retains and the scale goes up and they say, well, look what I did. This but was because of that. How, how much weight did you drop this morning? <sighs> Guys, I'm telling you, every date and night we've gone on. what did you eat on, last night? Every date night we've gone on, I've dropped weight the next day. Like, <laughs> I swear to you guys. We had Indian food. What's the other one it's I'm missing? It's not the non-keto food. No. It's the overeating. I overate at Korean barbecue. My weight went up the next day. So we've been on, th- okay. we, we've initiated this date night for the last three weeks. Indian food, dropped weight. Korean food, over eight. And then ate a bunch of snacks that night. Totally overdid it. Went up weight. Last night, I had some of the charcuterie board. I had some Brussels sprouts. I had probably 10 of Ryan's fries. I had a bite of his burger. I had my omelet. Mostly finished it. Yeah. I had a built bar when I got home. And you were down what? I was down like 1.4 pounds. <laughs> like we've got, we got off our trip. And I know we kind of started talking about our trip, but... I got off our trip and I'm down like 4.7 pounds since I weighed in on Saturday. Yeah. And it's what Monday when we're recording this. So within two days. I just think that uh, like, obviously there's so many benefits to being in ketosis and it suppresses your hunger and everything like that. But if you're going to choose something to focus on. It's going to be more powerful and more worth your time investment to try to stop eating well that needs to happen regardless of keto or not yeah and i don't know if it's the ease like there are so many benefits to eating keto food most of the time so you don't have to deal with the hunger and stuff but i would encourage you guys to like pick a meal once a week twice a month once a month one meal where it's not keto Mm -hmm. and your only goal is to eat only if you are hungry for that meal, do not eat until you or your body is like, we are hungry. It is time for dinner. And then your only other goal is to just stop. Do It doesn't, you don't need to finish what's on your plate. You can have a little bit of everything. The more you eat, it's not going to get better. Your only goal is to listen to your body to when you've had enough. And I teach this much more in depth than Vibe Club. So if... Yeah. If you're looking for that added support, that's where we teach the... It's something that, honestly, for me, has taken months of practice. Yeah. Well, I mean, we mostly started at the beginning of April, and we had we both had insane success in April. Yeah. But it's also something that I didn't give much thought to. I think there are other things that you need to kind of get under your belt and get really familiar with as far as like what I teach before you can do that. But it's never a bad idea to start being like, all right, I need to check in with myself because we get so used to what what lost us the first 40 pounds. Those portions look a certain way. Okay. What's going to lose you the next however many pounds, it's going to look different. To get you from, you know, 190 to 160, That's why I talk a lot about how you can do more like slip ups and more slippery slopes. What's going to get you from there to there is going to look different than what's going to get you the next 20 pounds. It just is. And that's not to make you freak out and be like, I'm not going to get to eat at all. I'm actually eating way more frequently, but smaller portions, it's working great for me. You just, you need to have the tools to adjust. I'm not eating, I may be eating more often, but I've just, I know how to make those changes so that it it does not feel restrictive at all. And it's funny because I did not do a good job of it while we were on our trip. I immediately got back to it on Saturday. And since Saturday, I am down 4.2 pounds. Crazy. It's crazy. And I was totally spinning out in my brain while we were on vacation. I'm like, I'm going to literally have to start from where I started at the beginning of April. You were like that Tasmanian devil cartoon, bro. Like it was out of control. Yeah. So I was just having a lot of thoughts about that and um, I was wrong and I was very happy to get that new evidence that yeah. it's like, it's like exactly like Ryan was talking about. Off plan meals do not need to cause all the drama that you guys are talking about it causing when it comes to you. Instead, it's not the food. It's not the off plan food. That doesn't mean eat whatever you want all the time. I mean, you yeah. can do that if you want to. But when it comes down to like, I want to be keto most of the time, but I'd love to have a little bit of freedom on Saturday nights to have two drinks and order something from DoorDash. You can do that. Yeah. 
And it's not going to be fun to learn the tool of stopping at enough. But I want you guys to remember if you're struggling with this, I really want you to tell, my, tell yourself eating double doesn't make this double as good. It Eating all of this doesn't make it better or taste better or a more pleasurable experience for me than eating a fourth of it. Eating five for like I was completely sad. Had I eaten so many fries, I would have felt sick. But I wanted some of those fries. That's they a certain amazing. point. It's just like, oh, wow, 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 <laughs> yeah. Wow. But the thing is, we check out. Most people don't want to be it's conscious numbing. through that. It's yeah. just numbing. And you're like, more must be better. More must be better. More must be. That's literally a lie. That's a lie. More is not better. Actually, more takes you to the point where you will start regretting and you start saying this wasn't worth it. It's it's it jacked me up, dude. Because I'll never look at portion sizes the same. <laughs> I don't, you can't after you realize that. And you might have to like re listen to this episode a few times yeah. to actually understand what she's saying. But Ex- play with it next time. Yeah. You're eating and you're like, I feel like I've had enough food, yet there's a bunch of stuff left on your plate. And you're like, like, I just had to put a couple pieces of a warm pastrami wrap into the trash. Like it was still warm. And I was, it was something about the warmth was like, oh, I don't want to throw this away. Mm-hmm. So I want you, but would I have been like happier or like more satisfied had I finished it? No, yeah. it would have, it was past enough. I would have, I would have been like, that was two, three bites too much. I should have thrown it away. So next time I want you to look at what remains and be like, does my life get better by finishing this? Or would it be cooler to be like, I've had enough. I can always eat this again tomorrow. I, most of it is just calming down this toddler part of your brain. That's like, we're not allowed to have this eat at all. We don't want to waste this food. So it's so yummy. It's so good. I want more, 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 more. It's a baby voice. It's like a baby toddler just begging for the good stuff. And it's like, no, I know you like chocolate and chocolate is good, but you eating five keto barks, trust me, guys, I've tried. I've tested this out. I've done the scientific research. Yeah. Five is not better than one. Your brain will tell you five is absolutely better than one. But as I've said before, you cannot get enough of what you don't need. There is a reason why you eat until there's no more space. You're just like, because then you just have to stop. There's a reason why you keep, you keep going because your brain is like, more is better. If some is good, all is better. That is a lie. It's a lie that's keeping you overweight. It's a lie that's preventing your progress. It's a lie that's standing in your way. More is not better. Enough feels amazing. We've discussed this. How used to, because right, we used to blame this on carbs. Mm-hmm. Every time I eat a cinnamon roll, I get so tired. Every time I get Neater's French toast and I eat a double batch, I'm so tired. And it's like, do carbs, try, again, Keto is the is the life for me, okay? But do carbs make me tired or is it me eating a basket of fries that is contributing to me being like, oh, give me a nap? Yeah. We have to get honest with ourselves. Me having a decent size serving of fries that's like, cool, I got the fries. I dipped them in the ketchup. I had like 10 of them. I got to enjoy them. That is enough fries. Not because I'm trying to restrict, but because I'm getting really honest with myself that 40 fries was not better than 10 fries. I just wanted some fries. I didn't need a meal of fries. And a lot of us are eating. I just consider when I used to eat Western bacon cheeseburgers and the thing of the curly fries and or the crisp cut fries and dunk it in ranch. And it's mm-hmm. like this enormous burger, bunch of fries, the dipping sauce. Like probably, but how could you possibly only eat half of that burger? How could you possibly? The pain, the pain. would be terrible. You know, I don't want the emotional pain of having to throw half of this away. Yeah. I would love the digestive pain of where I'm going to be dealing with this burger for the next 24 to 48 hours yeah. as it tries to, you know, do its thing in my body. Like mm-hmm. we, we're lying to ourselves all the time. Your brain is making up all kinds of bullshit all the time. More is not better. Leaving food behind this is, all is mental. hard. This is all mental. And you know, it's, I, I knew that, but when you shared that Gary V clip with me, it kind like, of, I'm, what did he say? I'm too mentally, dude, mentally strong to falter on this challenge it's this or something. Clip, maybe we can repost it or yeah. something. Cause it was, it's amazing. He's on this show where they eat really hot wings yeah. and he's just like completely not phased. And he, and he tells the guy, he's like, this is all mental. Yeah. He's like, I decided beforehand. Yeah. He's like, I'm way too mentally strong to, I'm too to mental. waver in this challenge. <laughs> Yeah, it's and it's so amazing how he can just like mentally overcome mind the over heat matter, like, of these yeah. wings. And he was probably in his head being like, "This is going to end. Yeah. This isn't going to last forever. This I can, you know." And it's it's what he was telling himself while he did it. 
Yeah. We're all telling ourselves terrible stories. Oh, I don't want to waste food. It's so sad. This is so good. I don't. And then, and then we wake up the next morning and we're like, well, my weight is up three pounds and this is so frustrating. And it's like, we're constantly trading. We're trading, we're trading emotions all the time. You literally will trade the discomfort of throwing away half of your cheeseburger that you paid good money for, and you will waste it on your body that doesn't need that extra fuel. And then you will be upset with yourself the next morning, all because you were afraid to throw the burger away. So you traded that emotional pain for actual physical pain and more emotional pain because now you're disappointed in yourself. Just imagine the other half of that burger going to your body where you don't want fat to go. Like for your me, body is like, I've had for enough. For me, it's my belt. Yeah. It's like, that's the one thing. And it's, it's hard, really hard for I guys to get. I made a joke get. about that at dinner yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. Because he was like, <laughs> I think you were like, I could probably be dumb, but I'm going to take like one more bite. Yeah. And he started biting it. I was like, oh no, it's going to your stomach. Because <laughs> I know that's his like sensitive spot. But like, can we just lighten the mood on stuff a little bit and just be like, your body is like, I, we're good. And you're like, I'm going to keep eating. And it's like, all right, well, we're putting it on your thighs. Like we're just, we'll yeah. save it for later. Because obviously if, if you don't want to stop when you've had enough food, then we must need to save this yeah. because there must be a problem coming. There must be a famine. We must like, we're not going to be able to get food for a while. So we'll just like pack it right on your ass. No problem. Yeah. I know how to, that's your body's job. Its job is to be efficient with the fuel. If you are overfueling, you are, you are paying into your weight gain. You're paying into being overweight. Crazy. So I think that covered, you know, in the end, I wish I hadn't stressed out about the trip. That's the only regret, really. It's like we, you were just kind of spinning out the whole time. We didn't really like get to in, enjoy much yeah. or like relax that much because you were spinning out. Yeah. But like in retrospect, it's like it, it wasn't a big deal at all. Yeah. It because really wasn't. I see this happen with my clients all the time. Like your brain will start spinning out and making things mean things. So my brain was like full at work. And remember, I'm like in a hotel room. So I'm like, I don't have anything to even really distract. So I just kind of had to be with it. And it wasn't the most pleasant experience. But just like, you're going backwards. You're losing your progress. I thought this was easy. I thought this was working. You're undoing everything. Like that was the soundtrack in my head makes sense i was having a terrible time <laughs> but that's why the thought work is so important that's why it's so important to i was still doing my shit like yeah it was a struggle but i was still planning i was still listening to supportive podcasts i was still doing my journaling i was still the the thing that caused the biggest change in my mental state so use this if it helps is i went to the maggie which was funny because she wasn't as far away as i thought she was i went to the maggie who was back to where she was before she started. In fact, I was already up before we left, but w the Maggie who went back to her all-time low, wherever she was in the future, and I was like, will she be thinking about this? Mm. Will that Maggie who's back to where she was be going, oh, I wish I hadn't eaten off keto in Tampa. Oh, I wish I would have stuck to my plan. Oh, I wish I would have. Is she worried about this? And I was like, absolutely she's not. She's not giving that a thought at all. Not at all. And yeah. I've had vacations like that. Yeah. Our anniversary was like that too. That gave me a lot of relief. Because a lot of the time we don't ask ourselves a lot, especially when we're getting back on track. Like, is this going to matter in a week? Is this going to matter in two weeks? Then why are you letting it take up this entire day of your mind? Yeah. Is this worth it? I didn't have that thought till the, the tail end of, <laughs> of yeah. this trip. But, but I know it will help me in the future. Like, will you be thinking about what you did wrong I put in quotes in two weeks. No. So yeah, it was a learning experience for sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah.